This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm going to show you how to treat your dog's mucousy, dry, inflamed eye at home. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. In today's video, we have Seattle. She's a little Shih Tzu, as you guys can see here. She's, I think she's about nine years old. And she's gonna be a great example because she looks like to me that she's got a particular type of eye condition that I may have discussed in the past, but I didn't really have uh, an example to show you. You can actually see, <clears throat> see whether or not your dog has this condition. And then we're gonna discuss some of the natural remedies. So first of all, I'm gonna try to sort of give you a bit of a close up on her. She's actually being a super awesome little patient dog. And I think you guys can see her eyes there. So we're a little bit inflamed, a little bit dry, a little bit mucusy. So what I'm gonna do next is do an exact close up on her, show you what's going on with her eyes. You can see if your dog has something similar. And then we're gonna discuss how to treat. So as you can see, the area above the eye, that's the conjunctiva, the sclera. It's a little bit red and, red and inflamed. I think if you're looking right on the eye, you can see it's a little bit dark. And if anything, it's a little bit cloudy. It's hard to see right through the surface of that eye or that cornea to see into the back of the eye. If you see, if I pull her lower lid down, girl, see how that girl, you. You can also see, see where it's all red around that eyeball, um, red below it as well. There's a little bit of a mucus discharge that's sitting here, right here in the corner. Good girl, you. And I can see, I think you guys can see the discharge below the eye as well. And I'll get as close as I can to see if you can actually see the, what's on the surface of the eye. So that's the cornea. Normally it should be quite clear. You should be able to see right through that through into the back of the eye and see a white, a, a real clear structure called the lens. And you're not able to see that on her. So what Seattle has most likely uh, is a condition called KCS or dry eye. It's not uncommon uh, in particular in our small breeds. And what it means is that she's most likely got a decrease in the amount of tear production. So the tears are produced from two places. There's a gland in, their, in the upper eyelid, so up here. Um, and there's also a gland that come produced from, th there's also an eyelid called the third eyelid, which sort of pops out the, the corner of her eye right here. It also has glands that produce tears. The main thought is that there's some type of immune mediated reaction. So the immune system attacks those glands and you see a dramatic decrease in tear production. Um, to measure that would first of all be going to see your veterinarian and they'll actually stick just a little strip of white paper that just goes underneath the lower lid. It's right here. And you time it over a 60 second period. So you, what you'd expect to see that after 60 seconds, there'd be more than 15 millimeters of, of length of a tears or that have been produced. If it's less than that, we would call it sort of borderline case, KCS. Anything, anything less than 10 millimeters, um, means that your dog has got confirmed dry or KCS. So because they're not producing enough tears, tears are the things that keep the surface of the eye lubricated. They you know, allow you to blink, keep it from becoming infected, from becoming secondary inflamed. So if you look at her eyes here, what's happened is that when you decrease the amount of tear production, you're gonna see all that redness, that inflammation. You're gonna see the mucoid discharge. Because what's happened is in KCS, yes, you're no longer producing the watery portion of the tears. So 95% of tear production is water. 5% is sort of an oil and a mucus. So that's what you're left with. You've got this oily oil and mucus, and that's why she's got that sort of mucus discharge. Um, but then secondarily, lacking those tears and that watery film protection, you're gonna get the secondary inflammation. You get this, the secondary infection. So you can see you know, bacteria allowing to grow. And then the body will, along with the inflammation, sometimes you can see sort of a, a whiteness on the surface of the eye, which is partly what she has here. 
Um, and also you can sometimes see a bit of a blackness and that's the body's way of trying to pr produce additional pigment just to stop sort of too much light going back through into the back of the eye damaging the eye and that's just all the body's way in part, in part of compensating for lack of tear production but it can be very irritating to have you know this mucusy discharge this inflammation the second irritation and I think she sort of got a mild case um, fortunately because she seems pretty happy and she's not rubbing her eyes too much but if you've got a dog that's got severe KCS, their eyes are, you'll, they'll wake up in the morning, their eyes are completely closed, they have, they're covered in that mucus, this sort of mucoid discharge, most likely that's what your dog has. And the first big thing for all of you if you're watching the video is go see your veterinarian and get it confirmed. So I want to just talk about a couple of things that could be used for treating it. So the mainstay for treatment is a veterinary medication called cyclosporin which suppresses the overactive immune system and then allows the tear glands are still there to produce some remaining tears. Um, and it seems to work for the majority of dogs, but it does need, mean lifelong medication, you know, two or three times a day you're putting these drops or this ointment into your dog's eyes. Secondarily though, you can look at doing some additional things to uh, treat some of the secondary symptoms along with one oral her herb, uh, which actually may be quite helpful. A number of people are having it, finding it helpful for when they have inflammation of the surface of the eye uh, due to dry eye. So the first big thing, real simple thing we've talked about in the past is this here. Here we've just got some tea, plain old black tea bag. I mean, it's a great topical anti-inflammatory, a great to treat the surface eye infections. Just make a cup of black tea. Um, ideally, you're boiling in the water first, keeping it sterile, making it once a day. And you could put in, you'd be putting in four or five drops three to four times a day. You're just keeping the eye moist and lubricated. A real simple, easy thing to do at home. The second thing is just going and picking up some lubricating eye tears. And there's different brands, different names. Isopto eye tears are the ones I typically use in vet practice. Similar, what you're doing is you're replacing those lost tears. So you've got to be putting those in at least twice a day, if not three to four, four times a day in the more serious cases. You're just keeping the eye lubricated. And that's really replacing the tears that are there. Many of you, if you've got a dog that has dry eye or KCS, you're going to be on that as well as the cyclosporin. And it's all over the counter and you guys can just pick it up and start treating your dog with that. The third thing I want to discuss is to use something topical for the infections that I have discussed in the past and it's this here. Just scooped it out of the fridge or out of the counter, it's just honey. And an easy way to make a solution of honey is to do a, a teaspoon of honey in about a half a cup of hot water and dissolve that in the hot water, let it cool down. Then you're, you'd be using three to four drops two to three times a day. Um, and, and it's great when you've got a secondary infection. So what happens in these cases of dry eye, it can, especially during certain situations, say things are pollinating, you can get a whole lot of inflammation, you get a whole lot of discharge, there's a trigger for an eye infection, then you want to treat that. So one option is obviously medication from your veterinarian. Another option is just the topical honey. Uh, we're just using a teaspoon of honey, but a half a cup of water, then three to four drops, two to three times a day for five to seven days. The last one I want to discuss is an alternative to uh, say the cyclosporin or something that's going to help deal with the immune mediated reaction and that's affecting the tear glands and a loss of tear production. Um, it's been really difficult to find many other natural alternatives. Uh, there is one herbal plant called 95% curcumin or curcuminoids. I've discussed it in the past for many of the different health conditions. So it's isolated from, from the herb turmeric and it comes as a capsule. And you need to be looking at the 95% uh, curcuminoid, so it's quite concentrated. You're looking at a sort of a standard dog dose of 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight. When there's severe inflammation, you're looking at twice daily, mild inflammation once daily. So something like for little Seattle here, she'd be getting 100 milligrams I started with it twice a day after about two weeks, wean her down to once a day. Now we give it four to six weeks to see if it's going to be helping her or not. 
Um, I've recently read a few papers where they're actually finding it very helpful for people with uveitis. Um, they think is immune mediated where they've got their immune system attack attacking the surface of the eye and causing some of these secondary um, black or white eye changes. So there is sort of one, sort of real big herbal option as an alternative. And when I'd have you at least consider talking to your veterinarian about it, consider trying it with your own dog if you're not finding it helpful with the cyclosporin and or you want to, want to try an alternative. So thank you guys for watching uh, this edition of how to treat your dog for a dry eye at home. Um, thanks Seattle who's being like super cooperative. She's a great little patient.